Hello and welcome to the Tab Touch preview for this week as we look ahead to round 10 in the NBL. We're part of the Hoops Heavens Basketball Hustle family. We're proudly brought to you by Tab Touch. Head to tabtouch.com.au for all of your NBL betting markets. I'm Chris Pike, the co-host, but the man I'm really excited to chat to this week. Great to be to be back with this man. He's the nightmare. He's the best power forward of his generation. He's a three-time NBL championship winner. In my eyes, he should be part of the 40th anniversary team. Maddie Knight, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Pikey. Good timing. As we're recording this, coming into round 10, the Wildcats have announced their 40th anniversary team, Maddie. Um, as our listeners would have heard, the last couple of weeks, I've caught up with Damien Martin and Sean Reddidge and Cody Ellis, and we've debated our Wildcats anniversary teams, and we've picked our teams, and, and well... To be honest, you were hotly debated, Matty. You were part of you were part of a lot of our teams, and the combined team that we ended up putting together, you were in it. Um, would you put yourself in the team if you were picking one? No, mate. You got to go with Jesse Wagstaff. Um, mm-hmm. We've been there a thousand years. <laughs> Six championships. He's the captain right now. Um, yeah, I don't understand it. Uh, two years playing is uh, in the classic point of uh, I find it a joke. How do you not have Jeff Wagstaff in the team? Yeah, I don't know who selected it, but it's quite interesting. Some guys must have some uh, interesting views. Yeah, well, before we go into that a bit further, so the, the starting five that was announced, I it was the same starting five I had, so I had no arguments with this. So it was it was James Crawford, Andrew Vlahov, Sean Reddidge, Bryce Cotton, and obviously Ricky Grace. Before we get on to the second five, any problems with that starting five? Is that pretty close to what you would have had? Yeah, I could have looked at Scotty Fisher yep. instead of Sean, but yep. uh, what Sean won six MVP straight. Yeah, that's a tough one, but no, it's pretty uh, pretty good five. Yeah, I agree. the The biggest debate I had was Sean and, and Scott Fisher, so um, I think it was a, almost a toss of the coin. So to me, where the debate gets interesting, and to be honest, I'm feeling pretty flat about it, and it's a bit disappointing. So the second five. Um, they ended up going Paul Rogers, Nick Kay, Scott Fisher, Kevin Lish, and Damien Martin, and Damo was named the captain. To me, Nick Kay's the interesting one. It's nothing against him, but he only played two years. He had two good years, but he was never the best player on the team in those two years because obviously Bryce Codden was, so he didn't dominate. And and for me, um, the toss-up for me has always been either you or, or Jesse, and I, I took you because I think obviously Jesse's got the longevity, but, man, you were... You were a dominant force in your prime, and you spent um, seven or eight years at the at the club, won three championships. So I went with you. Um, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I'm not sure that Nick K belongs in a 40 year team when he only played two seasons. Yeah, no, it's uh, interesting. Like I said, um, interesting uh, selection panel right there. Um, guys have not even been around the around the team, uh, but uh, I don't understand how it just lags up. Not in the team. Um, he's the captain right now. Six championships, what, 12 plus years at the Wildcat? Yep. Um, I think this is 13th, yeah. Yeah, how he's not there. That's, I believe that's a joke. Um, Lee and Santa Maria, what lives in Melbourne? Uh, body, yeah, he covered it. Uh, Lockie, interesting one. But um, yeah, no, I, I feel devastated for death because uh, a guy that plays two years. Yeah, because he made an Olympic team uh, and all that, or what a world championship. Mm. But um, yeah, what he didn't do much in two years. And the guy who played, who could have gone other teams, so uh, boy, all this whole yeah. time, um, I find that a joke. I'd love to hear the selection panel's reasoning. Well, speaking of the selection panel, so I've got I've got got the whole panel in front of me, and <laughs> I mean, you have a look at the names on this list, and and it's pretty hard to imagine how we feel like they might not have got it right because we've got Alan Black, John Casey, Dennis Cometti, Troy Georgiou, Tim Gossage, Dr. Adrian Hurley, Luke Longley, Body Nodge and Lockie Reed, along with Liam Santa Maria. That's a pretty good group. I mean, a lot of those know what Jesse's done and what you've done and what Mike Ellis have done. I'm not sure how they came to these decisions. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm shocked that uh, Mike Ellis is yeah. a legend of the club. Yeah, yeah Kev, uh, Kev won a couple of MVPs in the championship, but once again, he was, what, three years? Four. So four, seasons, yeah. four. At least it's better than two, but <laughs> still, what Mike Ellis has done for this club, 
Um, yeah, I, it's unbelievable, really. Um, Mike and Jesse should be there in front of those other mm. two. Yeah, um, Cody Ellis is now the co-host on our Hoop 7's Basketball Hustle show. And before we saw the team announced earlier this week, he said it would be ridiculous if Mike wasn't part of the team. He's obviously a little bit biased as his son, but even taking his Ellis hat off, that was his his view. Um, I'd be pretty flat if I was Mike today. Oh, definitely. Um, he was captain of the 30th anniversary team, and now he misses out altogether. Yeah, exactly. It's what been ten years since Kev played the last. Yeah. So how do you, how does the captain get booted for a guy who hasn't even played in that ten years? Um, I'd be devastated if I was Mike. You give your heart and soul to that club, even when he's finished playing, he's always there and whatnot. Yeah, I find that unbelievable. I know Jesse's personality he'd just water off the duck's back for Jesse, but yeah, I I still don't understand that one at all. No. Um... I know, I know you wouldn't put yourself in the team, but as I said, I had you in in the team. The team combined between myself, Sean, and Damo, we had you in the team as well. If you had been selected, would have it meant a lot to you? Oh, uh, mate, I don't worry about things like that. Yeah, um, yeah. my uh, I had a great career, but uh, that doesn't define my career. I know, and people closer to me, um, like you've said. They know what I did, so I'm not worried about a bunch of guys that never set foot in the basketball court. Some of them, what they've got to say. Well, that, that includes me, so I guess my opinion doesn't count for a lot, a lot either. No, I say it includes <laughs> you, mate. Like, uh, <laughs> I know, mate. I'm just yeah, like... You've had my back since day one, I remember that. Absolutely. Um, some of those guys, I don't understand it. And um, <laughs> how you dump the captain of a 30-year anniversary team. Yep, it's a it's a tricky one, and I guess no matter no matter what the team was, people would always be disappointed because you know fitting in reality, there's probably 15 players deserving fitting them into 10 is always tough. So they're in a no win situation, but yeah, I am disappointed with the, the some of the guys that have missed out. We're here to talk about what's happening in the NBA right now, Matty. We're here for the Tab Touch preview. As I said, head to tabtouch.com.au and you'll find all of your NBA betting markets. Um, now, before we get to what's coming in round 10, round 10 began on Wednesday night. This was a shocker, Matty. I don't know what you thought of this, but the New Zealand Breakers destroyed the Illawarra Hawks 90-67. to I don't think anyone saw this coming. No, it's, um, it's an interesting result, really. Um Probably not one a lot of people expected. New Zealand haven't been playing the best, and uh, I know Illawarra's form has been shaky of late, but um, they've got a win up in Cairns. I'm sure people expected uh, Illawarra to uh, win this game, but um, yeah, Illawarra, they're going through a rough patch right now. Um, it'll be uh, interesting to see how they bounce back, but I don't think too many people have tipped a, a break to come away with a win, especially a big win mm. like that. Absolutely. Yep, so that was a shocker. And now we've got Friday night um, to look forward to. This is an interesting game. Both of these teams coming in with winning form. It's down in, in Hobart where the Tasmania Jack Jumpers play well. So they've won their last couple, and they're playing against the Sydney Kings, who are now in their best form of the season as well. According to Tab Touch, Jack Jumpers are big outsiders, $2.70. The Kings are one forty seven. To me, it's a lot closer than that. I don't know what you think, Matty. Yeah, no, I um... It was great to see the bash got Ross. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we know. Um, that's fantastic. It shows you how much it means. That's May. I'm great to see them doing well. Um, they're going to need to keep the fans coming back and continuing to win will do that. But um, Sydney had a good win uh, last game and um, they're starting to get their pieces back together now. And uh, it'll be a tough trip down to, down to Hobart. Mm. Um, yeah, as the. Uh, they play hard and they make you earn anything. Um, so if Sydney's not prepared to match that, then uh, there's a good chance Hobart and Tazzy will get their first win. But um, I think Sydney's starting to build now and they'll uh, get a lot of confidence from their last win. Um, I think Sydney uh, get a win, but it'll be a close match. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, okay, then we've got a couple of games on Saturday. This first one, both these teams coming off, off losses, looking to bounce back. It's the it's the old Sunshine Stoush. We've got the Brisbane Bullets at home to the Cairns Taipans. Tab Touch has the Bullets 143, the Taipans 285. Similar to the first game, I think it's probably a bit closer than that. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Um, yeah, Brisbane, they're up one week down the next, mm. so not quite sure what Brisbane team you're going to get. 
thought he called out, called out his uh, can team. He so did. hopefully uh, he'll be hoping for a response from that. But um, yeah, no, I think uh, Brisbane has got too much firepower. They're all clicky. But uh, yeah, Brisbane will be keen to get a win and stay in contention with that top four. Um, another loss, and that puts them right back. So I'd be. Uh, Brisbane to come out fire in, uh, in a close game. Um, yeah, Brisbane to get the points. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm of a similar view. This one's interesting too. South East Melbourne Phoenix, their first home game back at John Kane Arena since way before before Christmas. And they're at home to the Perth Wildcats, who are coming off coming off that loss to Sydney. Um, Tap Touch has got them close. The Phoenix, 179 The Wildcats, $2.02. Two. What do you think? Yeah, no, it's to be a close game. Um... Yeah, South East back home. I'll be excited about that. Uh, Mitch Creek is in really good form right mm. now. And they got the biggest guy in the middle who's uh, making his presence known in the defensive end. Um, it's interesting to what Perth, I'm not sure if there's has a tribunal hearing yet or whatnot. No, as we, um, I think as we record this, it's later, later in the day on Friday that it's set for. Oh, okay. So I can't imagine uh, Hodgson playing. No. Uh, <laughs> Down a big, but I think South East Melbourne uh, win this one quite easy. Haven't haven't got your thoughts on that incident, Maddie. What did you think when you saw what Maddie Hodgson did? Yeah, no, uh, it was an interesting one. Um, yeah, obviously there's a lot of talk out in court, but you can't lose your cool like that. Mm. There's, there's playing tough, and then there's cheap shots like that. That's totally a cheap shot. Hitting twice in the head. Uh, you'd hope the NBL comes down tough and. Um, uh, an example that you don't want that kids look up to that and they see that they it's okay to do mm. so I imagine it'll be probably two weeks but it should be probably more than that sure. I never saw you do anything like that on a court Maddie, but I'm sure you got trash talked quite a bit and I'm sure people were trying to push your buttons to, to get you to, to fire up I mean is there any excuse for it no matter what was said to him no there's no excuse for it um, you can always try and set a screen on him or go and score a bucket on him but He'd have gone in the face. That's, that's, that's what he should have done. They should have dumped the ball down to him in the block and he should have just backed him down and scored on him. That was the best way to handle it, wasn't it? Definitely. And uh, probably already angry because they were getting smacked at the time. Yep. So that probably didn't help. But, uh, yeah, you guys will know now just go talk to him. Mm. So you can't handle it. And, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he bangs the back for it. Going to have to always pay, mate, because he's not going to be there the next few games. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a great point. Um, and and you're right. Teams are going to be trying to push his buttons once he does come back as well. Then on Sunday, um, this will this could very much depend on how how the Sydney Kings go tonight against the Jack Jumpers. But they're back at home against the New Zealand Breakers, and obviously the Breakers are coming off probably their best performance of the season. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh... Hopefully it's uh, kick start feeling. Obviously, uh, the new year, they started well, but mm. then uh, they uh, collapsed a little bit. But a um, big win against uh, Illawarra has probably given some confidence back. But, uh, yeah, depending on how Sydney goes tonight, but if Sydney get a win, um, then um, I imagine uh, they should get a double break again. Then next up on Sunday, I feel for the Jack Jumpers a little bit in this one because Melbourne United... Are coming off, blowing that game in overtime against Adelaide to end their winning streak last Sunday. They're back at home for their first home game. Um, I find it tough to, to go past Melbourne in this one. Yeah, I think Taz is going to get Melbourne at the wrong time. <laughs> mm. They've had uh, plenty of time to do uh, over that loss. And I'm um, sure they've had a tough week out call and they'll be ready to bounce back. Or I'll tell you, going at the wrong time, I think. Um, I reckon Melbourne should get this one uh, quite easy. And Chris Golding coming off going 0 or 14. It's not the time to play him the next game, is it? No, uh, a shooter like that, you know they're coming and ready to hit. So you go either way for Chris Turner to have a 40 point game, mm. or a guy like Chris, you know he's going to bounce back. So I imagine him to have a big game. And um, yeah, I think Melbourne will uh, walk away quite easy. Yep, I think so too. And the last up, Monday night. I wouldn't want to be the Hawks this week with Brian Gorge and after that game on Wednesday night. So they need to bounce back, but it's going to be tough in Wollongong against the Phoenix. I mean, it's, it's not it's no easy task. No, it's uh, already said that they're not happy with their defense. Yep. And, well, they gave up 90 points to the break, and mm. <laughs> it's not going to help him. And knowing Gorge, he would have had him um, 
out there working hard. So yeah, it's a tough, it's another tough game, and right now that top five, top six, it's very close. So that game against the Breakers, they could come back and haunt them. So well, I mean, they, they could drop out of the top four altogether, depending on other results if they lose this game. Exactly. So they're sitting pretty at the top, and then um, yeah, really since the COVID break, they really haven't come back and been playing that same type of basketball. Um, their defense has really gone missing and it's hurting them. But uh, I think um, Phoenix will come in and get that win. Yeah, I'll, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Phoenix on top of the ladder right now as well and, and playing playing well. So so that's round 10 in the NBL, Maddie. Head to TabTouch and tabtouch.com.au and, and see if you want to take Maddie's advice and, and try and try and find find some winners. Um, it's been fun catching up, Maddie. Before I let you go, Couple of the kids back at school this week. Has that given you a little bit of a bit of a reprieve? Yeah, my having to at school, uh, that's been good. And then uh, Ivy, she goes once a week, so um, she's excited about that. So it's a lot quieter in the household now. So not used to it, but uh, it's good getting to spend more time with the younger ones. Mm. No, excellent, Maddie. No, it's been fun picking your brain again. And thanks to Tap Touch, we'll do it all again next week. Cheers, Pikey.